more years ago uh, to clean up the network library. Actually, in our different uh, experimental work with the, with the, with Speed and Power, we, we were unhappy with the, the network library and we get stuck with it several times. And uh, one of the reasons it is quite deep, dirty, not quite totally dirty, and uh, there, there are uh, zero percent tests. This are ten weeks hard. We have fewer tests uh, so far, but not down that much, and we are still unhappy with it. So we, uh, we decided uh, with uh, with Dick and Luke uh, in order to start uh, uh, from scratch, to rewrite it from scratch. Uh, actually, the situation is not uh, it is not very bright on other libraries we we, we look at. So the idea, for, for those who don't know the, the, the Ocean project, that we want to uh, split the, the current socket library from from its actual implementation and to have to make the uh, to be able to have several backends and to switch from one to the other. And uh, of course, this will impact the VM. We can use one plugin or another one, which will impact the portability of the VM. And of course, we can decide which network API we, we can use on the, the operating system level. So far, currently in the current uh, VM, we are uh, it's hardwired. There is a, 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 the socket library and the, the backend are mixed, and you cannot choose which API with which. In the network idea you use it. There is a single one, and, you, and this is what, what makes us uh, upset with the, with the library and make us rewrite it. So, since a year we, we start working uh, regularly, not, not much, like a half, a half a day every one or two weeks, and the, 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 we made several iterations and the things are getting uh, better now and more stable, so we are, we are almost there to have a first uh, quite complete uh, library. You see we have, we use inheritance, so there is inheritance in OO, it's for, for something, so uh, we, we don't, we, we want to, to split the roles in different classes, and of course there is uh, the low level stuff, are, it's pushed outside the socket classes, it, so we have a wrapper for the, the, the socket plugin that gives us access to the low-level uh, primitives. So all primitives are there, and this opens the, the, perhaps the way to replacing the backend in a future version, hopefully. Uh, some figures about the, 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 the current status. So there, the, the, the library is not very big, so like... Uh, Okay, uh, like uh, less than 20 classes in the, 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 the kernel and uh, less than 200 uh, methods. Uh, but you see the effort is quite uh, equivalently or equally uh, spread on writing text and writing the library. Actually, we, we, uh, our, we, our process is, uh, is based on uh, extreme programming and we do peer programming all the time. All the time, no exception. And we start by tests. The idea is that we try to have only what we need and having uh, uh, and progress uh, building up on reliable uh, basis. And the okay, we, the the, lab, the current status is not. I mean, uh, we didn't finish yet, and we were rather slow. One of the reasons that we don't have, we don't spend too much effort or not uh, on it, like one, as I said, half a day every one or two weeks. Uh, but also, uh, we had hard time writing tests because of concurrency issues. We want to, uh, to have, uh, to test everything, to have the server, to test server and client sites. So we have to, to deal with the concurrent threads, trying to communicate and see what, how to test this situation, there is no support in this uh, uh, unit for such uh, situation there. And uh, moreover, we are dealing with low-level stuff that goes outside the image, so we don't know what, what is the impact on the, uh, what happens on the resource of the operating system, or at least we have only some primitive that give us some info, but, but uh, not more. Okay, so the, uh, 
still we, we could manage to, to get something and hopefully we will get uh, uh, a version for FAR 1.4. Now, if you are willing to help, give us your feed some feedback. The idea is that uh, Ocean is available on, on, on uh, script source, it's on immaterial of course. Uh, so you can uh, load it in Faro and try to come back to use it in your code. So if you are doing some, some networking, and give, uh, give us feedback. And from the beginning, I'm saying we, us, and who are those guys? So, of course, me, but there are others. <laughs> we are rowing on the ocean with uh, Luke, uh, Jadik, and Oli, who will not attend. And recently, there is a guy at the end who is Igor, who starts <laughs> helping us He's currently 14, uh, doing a new backend based on, based on Netflix. Boost. And that's it. So this is uh, completely spontaneous and prepared, but um, I'm very excited about this, so I can't wait to show you. Um, so the idea here is I use Peer in my in my main site, and it's you know I really like it. It's cool. It's quite a learning curve, but it's very powerful. But the trouble is, um, I want my users who aren't maybe fanatic small talk users to be able to create nice pages using my software. So they're not really going to learn a peer wiki syntax. Um, so what I've done is I've created a WYSIWYG editor for peer. Um, so if I go, I go to the page there, um, so here we can see WYSIWYG editor, wiki editor, and a preview. So if I, if I go from my uh, WYSIWYG editor to my wiki editor, can you zoom in a bit? <laughs> So there's the there's the there's the wizard with you. I know actually what let's uh, this is very very unprepared. So 
let's make main bold, shall we? Okay. Now, and those of you who know the here wiki syntax, if I go to wiki, wiki editor, then you'll see. Oh, let's make that bold. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. Let's let's uh, let's change that and uh, and make it, make it normal again and see if the, the wizard we get to recognise it. Oh. Incredible. So how about we make some? Uh, let's make this into a list or something like that. Actually. Just that. Uh, okay, there's a, there's a nice little list, and then we have. works in the wiki version. So there you see it's uh, page slash account, that's the, the, the here wiki syntax working again. And basically what I've, what I've tried to replicate is I've tried to replicate most of the functions, um, most of the kind of simple formatting functions in peer in a, in a wiki mode. But peer is really powerful because it enables you to embed uh, components and there's no real way of representing the components. So for example on this page, um, Let's save that page for a moment. Um, we've got this, this component that allows you to choose um, different views for your site. It's a kind of template to use. So you've got a book view, an event view. So there's no real way of representing that in a, in a easy way editor. So in that case, um, what it does is it, it actually shows the, the peer wiki syntax that you can't edit it in the wiki and then you can flip again to the, to the wiki view and you can see the, um, you can edit it as you like in here. Um, okay, so that's that. So the other, the other thing that people commonly want to do is they want to be able to upload, upload images. Um, so say we want to upload an image here. Um, I click on the, on the image upload thing there, and I've done this. You can just type an image URL here in from the web. But what we can also do is you go choose file. Um, let's try. We won't pick something too big. So. Report card. There's a button over there. That's my nice one. Um, so there. So it uploaded it to the, um, to the file, and it's actually storing it as a file on the disk. So I've got a kind of external file interface, and you can define where that is, there's a configuration thing in that. Um, and then you close it, and then there, there's your image in the, in the blog, um, sorry, in your peer page. Um, you, can also, you can also click on any image, and you can see it there, um, and you can change, you want it inline, you want it left, left aligned, so that's up to left aligned, and go to the wiki editor. And we can see there it's added a little attribute to say line is left. Um, so, so why? So I've done this really purely for selfish re reasons. But um, I, I, what I really like, one of the really powerful things you can do um, in peer, as I've explained, is try to is um, let's go to my little blog here. So here I'm babbling on about some components I've written. Here's, um, here's a bit of code. And you notice it's quite, quite nicely syntax, um, syntax highlighted. Um, similar to how you get syntax highlighting within Faro. And that's no uh, coincidence, because this is actually using a shout syntax highlighter that Philip wrote a while ago. Um, so it's actually getting the, getting the highlighting from the peer image. And actually, if you look at the code behind this, all I've said is, I haven't actually embedded this as a string. I've just embedded this as a reference to the code um, that's running in my image behind it. So it's just said a particular class, any file upload example, method this, and then bang, you get your code in the in the in your blog. And then I've also 
Um, somewhere here. Oh yeah, so this is this is this is showing my file upload um, example. Um, so I've actually embedded a component in this blog, which I think you don't find in a lot of, a lot of um, WordPress blogs. Um, so I can click choose, and there you see the file uploaded, and um, it appears. So I think you've got something quite powerful here. You've got the ability to write a blog about small talk. It's a very easily embed code in there, and if you change the code, you have to worry that the code that you display in your blog is getting out of date with the code behind it because it's not actually embedded in the string. And you can, if you want to talk about a component, you can just put the component directly in your blog, and there you've got it. So I think what would be really cool is if um, is if we could have a, a site like WordPress.com, but it could be you know, seasideblogs.com, and we could all just go there and say, I want a seaside blog, um, and it'd be nix.seasideblogs.com or something like that. Um, and we could start writing, we start embedding codes, and we're embedding our components, um, and we've got a nice busy review, and hopefully we will <coughs> um, start developing some more add-ons appear and make it almost as cool as all, all the add-ons you get from WordPress. That's it. So anyone? Ah. It's available but I haven't done a configuration of whatever. Because it's a bit... I, I'm, I'm about to do that, but there's a few little bits and pieces I have to tweak to do. So it's, it's all it's all in there. Oh, hey, I'm getting questions in the show. Yeah, I just wonder, um, is the core functionality is by inside, or do you go back every time to do that? Yeah, it's a mixture. So the parser, so I'm, I'm, I'm the parser operates on the DOM. So I, I look at the DOM for certain, you know, bubbles that I understand, translate into bits and text and like. And I've actually, actually, one thing I should show you is. Um, <laughs> So this is testing the um, the parser because the parser is written in JavaScript. This is testing the the, part, the JavaScript parser in JavaScript. So I've got a whole load of tests for making sure the parser does what it should do. Um, so the the translation from rich text to wiki is in JavaScript, but the other way around makes a round trip absolutely. Yeah. Just a question, Matt. Yeah. Um, is it on the plan like, to have one button to add one menu entry or one block entry? Because this is always a pain. Ah, okay, yeah. So the other part of the, the other part of it that I can explain is this is this is not really part of the presentation, but this is um, something we did in Einhoven. So we were trying to improve here, make it more useful. Um, and one of the problems with here is you've got the You've got the commands and the sitemap and all this kind of stuff in the bottom in the template. And if you fix, if you muck up the template, then you can lose the ability to do everything, and it's uh, it's a bit of a mess. So what we thought would be better idea is if we had have an admin view of the site, and basically we've wrapped the site up in an admin panel. So that's basically what we've got. This is started; it's not complete yet, but here you can see you've got the you've got the, the, the sitemap down here. And I'm not sure this is going to work, but if I click on one of these. Oh, yes, okay, that works. So there you go. So you can, you can basically navigate around here. Um, and then at the bottom, in theory, you've got the commands that you can then say, I want to edit this page, I want to do that. So thank you very much.
Okay, uh, as some of you know, uh, I'm living in the north of France, but uh, I figured out that I have a little knowledge about uh, my our past this year. So I went to YouTube and found some useful information. I think uh, I, I want to share with you with a, a five time, a five minutes video.